go through and talk about some of the basic properties of derivatives, and then we're going to get into uh, the derivation of the power rule and how to find the derivative of trigonometric functions. Okay, So let's start off with a, a really basic property, which is multiplication by a constant. Okay, So we're going to say, suppose I have a function f of x, which is equal to a constant times a function g of x. And what I want to do is I want to find the derivative of f of x. So I want to find f prime of x. Uh, and I want to see you know, what kind of rule do we have here if I multiply by a constant. Um, most of the time in most you know, math objects that we've worked with so far, you can just say, oh, well, you, know, you just pull the constant out and do everything normal. And let's find it. We're going to find out here if it's the same way for derivatives. Uh, so I'm going to use the limit definition of the derivative, right, which we derived in the uh, previous video. So I have that f prime of x uh, is equal to the limit as h goes to 0. And again, I'm going to be using h instead of delta x because it's easier to write uh, of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. So what I want to do is I want to substitute my function in. So I'm going to have the limit as h goes to 0 of my function is a times g of x. So I'm going to have a times g of x plus h minus a times g of x. And this is all divided by h. Okay, So from here, I can use my limit properties. And I know that if I have a constant, uh, I can just pull that constant out. So I can rewrite this as a times the limit as h goes to 0 of g of x plus h minus g of x divided by h. And this whole limit here, I recognize as just the derivative of g, right? It's just g prime of x. It's the limit definition of g prime of x. So therefore, it's going to be equal to a times g prime of x. So if you have a constant multiplying a function and you want to take its derivative, you can, in fact, just take the derivative of the function and you know just put the constant out front, just like you do with most other stuff. Okay. Let's say now we want to look at a sum. So I have f of x, and it's going to be equal to the sum of g of x plus k of x. Okay. Um, so what I want to do is, I again, I want to find uh, f prime of x. What is that going to be? So I start out with my limit definition. So I have the limit as h goes to 0 of um, f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. And here I'm going to plug everything in. So I'm going to plug in my two functions here. So what I have is the limit as h goes to 0 of g of x plus h plus k of x plus h minus g of x minus k of x, where I'm just distributing the negative sign to you know the whole thing. And this is all divided by h. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of group these a little bit differently. I'm going to say I have the limit as h goes to 0 of g of x plus h minus g of x over h. And you know, using my limit properties, right? I can do this plus the limit as h goes to 0 of k of x plus h minus k of x divided by h. And now you can see what we've done, right? This is just the derivative of g. This is the derivative of k. So therefore, we have g prime of x plus k prime of x. So if you have a sum of functions and you want to take the derivative, you could just take the derivative of each function individually and then add them together, uh, which is nice and easy. Okay. So now let's uh, let's come up with a gen uh, in a rule in general for a class of functions because. The limit definition of the derivative is nice, but it's a pain to have to go through and do the limit definition of the derivative every single time you want to. You might have, in some of your exercises, already noticed that there are certain patterns uh, that emerge when you are doing the derivative of different classes of functions. So uh, we're going to look at the function f of x is equal to x to the n. Okay. Now, you know, if you, you think, well, maybe we want to generalize this ax to the n plus, or, you know, like a2 times x to the n minus 1 and so on. But 
if we find the derivative of an equation for this, we can use the two properties we just derived, multiplication by a constant and um, splitting it by sum to generalize it to, to more polynomials. So what we really need to do is we want to find what is the derivative of this function, just x to the n. Okay, so we're going to start off, as always, with our limit definition. And this is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of uh, f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. And I'm going to plug in my function, which is x to the n. So I have the limit as h goes to 0 of x plus h raised to the nth power minus x to the n divided by h. Okay, So now I want to expand this out, right? And it's a little weird because I don't actually know what n is, right? n could be anything. But I do know how to expand a binomial, right? You can use combinatorics, Pascal's triangle, etc., to expand any kind of binomial. So what we're going to get is we're going to have the limit as h goes to 0 of, expanding this out, our first term is going to be x to the n, right? Our second term is going to be plus n times x to the n minus 1 times h. And, and then if you have more terms, right, you're doing plus uh, n choose 2 times x to the n minus 2 times h squared. Plus, if you have even more, right, n choose 3 times x to the n minus 3 times h uh, cubed, and so on. Okay, until you end up, your last term is going to be h to the n, and then at the end you still have that minus x to the n as well. Uh, and then you have all divided by h, okay? So you're going to get this expansion on top, and on the bottom you have the h. And if we look at this, right, it doesn't matter what power of n this really is, because the first term, x to the n, is going to cancel the or x to the n on the right over here. So I'm going to be left then with n times x to the n minus 1 times h plus n choose 2 x to the n minus 2 h squared and so on, right, plus h to the n, all divided by h. And now at this point, I look and say, hey, every single term on the top has an h in it. So now I'm able to actually do some simplification, right? I can now say, OK, well, this is going to be the limit as h goes to 0 of, if I cancel out the h's, I get n times x to the n minus 1 plus uh, n choose 2 times x to the n minus 2 times h plus blah, 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 uh, plus h to the n minus 1, right, where we've canceled an h out of every term on top. And now I don't have an h on the bottom anymore, so I can plug in 0 into h, and this gives me n times x to the n minus 1, because h is going to be 0 every single term, and every single term has at least one h, so all the terms become 0 except for the leading term, and I get n x to the n minus 1. And this is called the power rule, where if I have this function, then its derivative is nx to the n minus 1, where all you do is you bring the power down up front, and then you decrease the power that it's being raised to by 1. Now, you can do this with normal things. So if I had x cubed, right, then the derivative is going to become, let me actually, so I'll just make a little chart, f of x, f prime of x, right? So if I have uh, x cubed, then my derivative is 3x squared, where I've brought the power down up front, I have 3, and up here I subtracted 1 from the power to be left with 2. If I have something out front, let's say I have 2x to the 4th, you're just going to multiply it. So I'm bringing down the 2 out front, uh, the 4 out front, sorry, and there's a 2 there, so I'm going to multiply it by 2. So I have 2 times 4x cubed, which is going to give me 8x cubed. You can also do it with negative power, so I have x to the negative 2, right? This is going to come out front. It's going to be negative 2x to the negative third, OK? Or with fractional powers, if I have x to the 1 half, right, which is just equal to the square root of x. So now I know how to take the derivative of square roots, because I can say, OK, well, the square root of x is just x to the 1 half. So I bring the 1 half out front, and I subtract 1 from the power, and I have x to the negative 1 half, OK? So I get 1 over 2 times the square root of x. Uh, and you can, you know, you can keep doing this. So this is a nice, uh, and it also shows that, you know, if you just have something like 3x, right, what's the derivative of 3x? That's just going to be 3, because we bring the 1 down up front, the 1 becomes a 0, and then x to the 0 is just 1.
So power rule is a really useful tool um, that you'll just probably use for the rest of your life if you go into any kind of math um, at all because it's just really, really, really widespread. And polynomials are obviously very useful. So that's how you do uh, power rule and the, the derivative of polynomials. Let's also talk about trig functions and how to do trigonometric derivatives here. Um, so we're going to start off just by finding the derivative of sine. So I have f of x is equal to the sine of x. And I want to find the derivative. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the limit definition as we always do. Uh, so I have f prime of x is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. Then I'm going to plug in my uh, my function. So I have the limit as h goes to 0 of sine of x plus h minus sine of x divided by h. And now I'm going to think back to when uh, I remembered my trig identities. And we're going to expand out the sine of x plus h. So I'm going to have the limit as h goes to 0 of, and if I expand this out, I get sine x cosine h plus sine h cosine x. And that's going to be minus sine x. And I'm going to have all that divided by h. And now I'm going to, uh, we're going to pull some stuff out here. So I'm going to rewrite this as the limit as h goes to 0 of, I'm going to have, uh, so we're doing the whole thing. So I have sine of x times, I'm going to have pulled the sine of x out of the sine x cos h and the minus sine x. So I'm going to have times uh, sine x of times cosine h minus 1 over h and plus cosine x of sine h over h, okay, which we have up here. And now I say, well, what do I do? I'm going to start. I'm going to use my limit properties here, okay. Um, and to get my limit properties, I'm going to say, well, as h goes to zero, uh, what's going to happen to our other functions? So uh, we're going to take this one, right? I know that the limit as h goes to zero of sine of h over h uh, is equal to one, right? So I'm left going to be left with a cosine x here. And over here, I know that this limit is going to be 0. Okay, So what I end up getting then is just cosine of x. So uh, now that we have this, this is super, super useful to us. Um, because I now know that the derivative of sine is simply going to be cosine. And you can do similar methods, uh, similar properties, such that if you have your f of x and you want the derivative and you're doing trigonometric functions, we can make a list. And I'm not going to go through and do all the derivations, but if you're interested, you can certainly try them yourself or find them online. So if I have uh, cosine of x and I take the derivative, um, I'm going to have negative sine of x. If I do tangent, uh, the derivative of tangent of x is equal to the secant squared of x. If I do negative cosec, oh sorry, if I do, um, I'm looking at the answer, if I want to find a cosecant of x, I take the derivative, the derivative of cosecant of x is equal to negative cosecant x times cotangent of x. It's kind of a weird one. If I have secant, I take the derivative of secant of x, I'm going to get secant of x times tangent of x. And finally, if I take the derivative of cotangent of x, I'm going to end up with negative cosecant squared of x. Okay, So now you know how to take the derivative of uh, polynomial functions using the power rule and also uh, take the derivative of trig functions. Um, and this kind of general approach is, is how you're going to do a lot of them, where you're going to plug it in, you're going to expand it out using trig identities. And then once you get here, um, you have to you know, remember some, some limit rule stuff uh, to make sure that you can simplify it. And then once you can simplify it, you're left with a, a nice answer. Okay, and then once you have it, you no longer have to use limit definition. Now, if you see, you know, you see cosine x off in the wild, and you want to take its derivative, you don't have to plug it into the limit definition. You just say, oh, I know it's negative sine x, and it might seem like a lot, like oh, well, we have to memorize all of these. Uh, but honestly, you're going to use these so often, at least sine, cosine, and, and maybe tangent. 
um, but especially sine and cosine, that it's it'll just be second nature at some point. Same with power rule, is you'll just do it so frequently it will become uh, almost automatic, like a addition or multiplication tables. Thanks for watching.